A good number of you are buying your first electric car, pure battery electric. Congratulations, whatever you got. There's a few hot ones out there right now. But I've been getting some emails asking, how do I break it in? Because you've been buying gas engine cars all these years that require a break in period. On your EV, there really isn't one, but there kind of is. Let's get some background. Now, the reason you break in a combustion engine car is first and foremost to get these piston rings here that go around the piston and seal it to the inside wall of the cylinder to marry nicely, to get to know each other. They hone themselves, they polish together, if you will, so they seal very tightly. That allows the car to have an especially long life if you do that gradually during the break in period, also to have less blow by. That's a lack of compression which can reduce the amount of power and the economy of your car. It's just a good thing to let these guys to get to know each other. The other part is ditto here. This is a crankshaft. This lives down in the bowels of this guy, but all those shiny areas you see right there, those are called journals. They're essentially bearings, and you can see how polished these have become on this used crank. This is from breaking in a car that you get a very nice micro mating between those journals and the parts that go around them, which are bearings, which connect to your various rods here that attach to your pistons. All of this is literally inside engine 101, but if you allow that to happen gradually during break-in, your engine works better for longer. Okay, so without an engine to break in, what is there to deal with? Well, there's definitely a few components that EVs have in common with combustion engine cars. The first one that I want you to think about is breaking in your brakes. Brakes composed of discs and those pads that clamp on them that we've talked about before are common to all cars. EVs do not dispense with them. Now, EVs do a lot of their braking through the motor resistance of regeneration. So when you tap the brakes, you're actually telling a motor to resist your forward movement and thereby capture energy that goes back in the battery. However, you do also use your friction brakes, especially in harder, more aggressive stops. And you want that to happen for the first 500 miles rather gradually. So the pads and the discs get to marry each other nicely, get a nice pattern between themselves. That allows them to wear a little longer, to operate without any kind of vibration or shimmy, and to work more quietly as well. So avoid panic stops on your EV brakes for the first 500 miles or so. It's really hard to do a panic stop on an electric car, but don't go out of your way to do it. The other thing to think about are your tires. Tires on all cars need braking. A lot of folks don't know that. This. The first thing is when new tires come out of the mold at the factory, they have kind of a, almost a lube or a grease on them, a very thin layer. It's a, it's a mold release and it allows them to pop out of the mold, but it's also slippery and slick. It takes a few hundred miles for that to thoroughly wear off in average gradual driving. Do that until you really feel you've got full traction on those tires. The other thing about braking in tires, by driving gradually the first 500 miles, is that you are exposing them to their first cycles of heating and cooling, that's called heat cycling in the tire business, as well as lateral and vertical loads, all of which help to finally sandwich together all those layers of rubber and belts that make up the tire's actual structure. You want that to happen gradually for the first 500 miles as well. Tire manufacturers and big tire installers all agree on this, and your EV is no exception. Finally, a lot of you ask about the battery and how to condition that for longest energy retention over the years you'll have the car. And the battery is the most analogous thing to your combustion car's engine. It has the most to do with the car's character and its livability. It has the most to do with the car's cost, to be honest, just like an engine. Well, what's going on here is something that should be out of your hands. A car maker has sophisticated management of an electric car's battery, both to monitor the way it delivers power, the way it receives power in a charge, whether it's on a plug or regeneratively, as well as temperature control and management of that battery. All of them are key and all of them are beyond your ability to do much. At least they should be. If you find a lot of users are saying, yeah, you got to drive your EV a certain way to break in the battery, I would suggest your car maker was asleep at the switch. This should not be your problem. <laughs>